joined now by the quarterback coach and former NFL QB. He's this guy's busy, Steve. <laughs> he's he's now the director of quarterback development for the XFL, and he co-hosts the Room podcast with NFL quarterback Kyle Allen. It is Jordan Palmer joining us, friend of the show. Jordan, how you doing? Thanks for giving us some time. I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, busy's busy's a good word. This is a good word, but it's also a good <laughs> good thing to be. So, how are you guys doing? You guys loving it? This is uh, you guys been talking for months now about weeks like this. Flip this inter- interview around. You guys pumped? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You can't imagine. In fact, we're so pumped that we're ang- you know we're full of angst. Um, the problem with these games like this, Jordan, you know it. Uh, you have a great season. You're 13 and three, and you're you're hitting on all cylinders. Even when you don't play well, you score 30 points. I mean, it couldn't be better. But then all of a sudden, you look over, and there's another team that is exactly like you that you have to beat. Uh, you don't get a, when you get to this point of the playoffs. You don't get to meet those two and 14 teams that are struggling. No, you don't. Uh, there's some worthy adversaries out there for the Buffalo Bills, and. Um, that's what's, that's what's so great about this sport, right? We saw the other side of what this looks like at the college level with that championship game, and we see it in the NBA. But, you know, recently we don't see it in the NFL. I mean, just to think of, the, uh, you know, any Bills fans going to never forget, you know, the way the season ended last year. And that wasn't even the AFC championship or the Super Bowl. That ended in the divisional round. So uh, there's so much at stake. Uh, when you get to these playoffs and, um, you know, so much has gone into it for everybody. So many fans have put so much into it that uh, what's fun is all that stuff kind of goes out the window. Now you just got to play your best ball. And, you know, everyone can say take it one game at a time or one play at a time. I think that's really easy to say. And, and most people would believe that that's how you win. But the elite teams actually do it. And um, and so now's the chance to see. You can talk about it and practice it. Uh, but now can you really actually go one play at a time, one quarter at a time, one series at a time? So, Jordan, concerning Josh, the, the big focus this week from the media was naturally the turnovers. He's had more than his fair share of them this season. At the same time, I think Josh is one of the most self-aware quarterbacks I've ever been around in terms of critiquing his own play. And I was encouraged by what he said. You know, he's not going to let the negative plays affect his approach, and you cannot do that in the postseason. Uh, knowing him like you do, though, and knowing how sometimes he can be hyper-competitive, I found the defensive coordinator for the Dolphins' approach interesting. They blitzed him on 40% of his dropbacks, and they were giving him a lot of one-on-ones on the outside with cover zero. And I think I, I wonder if Josh's own – I wonder if Josh felt challenged by that, like, oh, you don't think I can hit this again? And that's why he went downfield as much as he did, even after – he had a lot of success, and they were up 17 nothing. Um, is there a recognition of time and score that has to work itself into a quarterback's psyche in those situations? Uh, I think it's easy to say you're up, protect the lead, you're down, let's let it rip. But the reality is, is when you call a play, that play, you have an idea and what you want in that play. And I, th- I can think back to... A few years ago, when uh, when Josh had his breakout year, early in the season, they were playing Miami, and we're up big. And he had Stefan Diggs deep down the field. I don't remember what the score was. You guys might, but it was at Miami, I believe. And I think they were up, you know, two or three scores. And they take a shot, and, and Josh missed Stefan Diggs. You guys remember what happened on the next play? I honestly don't. They I came do. right back and dialed it up again and hit it. And it was that mindset of, we think they're playing a coverage that this play is going to work against. So what's the read on this play? So, I mean, with young quarterbacks, no, you want to think about being in four-minute offense and protecting leads. Josh, this Bill's offense is defense regardless of what the score is, and you want to make great decisions and deliver the ball with timing and accuracy. One of the things, you know, this game really, I mean, it's brought into focus by Josh and Joe. And – since you've worked with both of them, give us the ups and downs, strengths and weaknesses of both these guys. And more importantly, each coaching staff has to handle these guys differently, right? I mean, what has the Bills and Bengals coaching staffs been able to do to maximize both these guys and their different skills? I think it starts with um, all the success in any of these teams starts with leadership at the 
right? Ownership level, front office. And so when I think of what, you know, Brandon Bean and, and, um, and uh, the family, what they've done, Josh, all of it, right? There's a lot of pieces here. Some people aren't even there anymore, right? Um, is it started with understanding his strengths and weaknesses and building around that. So part of that is the, the play callers and the, the, way, the, the way they're designing the offense, obviously the personnel around them. Uh, but I think it goes all the way down to people like Matt Barkley being in the room with them. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a, they, they really surround the, the good teams that have the premier quarterbacks that are going to sign big extensions or have signed big extensions. Um, there's certainly talent and there's work ethic and there's all those things there. Uh, but what you see is you look at everything that surrounds that quarterback and you go, mm, good decision, good decision. That was a good call. Yeah, that's the right person. Um, and so I look at both these teams and I go, wow, so Joe has an offensive-minded head coach. Um, you don't have to have it, right? Josh has a defensive-minded head coach, and this has gone really well. Um, but with Joe, on the other side of it, because Bills fans are familiar with, I could go down the list of the, the great things that the Bills have done to surround Josh, but everybody's familiar with those. But Joe, you know, it's T. Higgins that same year getting a rookie receiver, and then the next year getting Jamar Chase, who's not just what he is, he also, they have that chemistry. Um, you know, they loaded up on O-line and defense um, and free agency, spent in free agency last year like they never have before. And I'm very familiar with the Bengals organization. Um, and then uh, just some of, you know, the backups they have around him. And they just, they've just done a great job of, of supporting him, getting like-minded guys. Um, and so, you know, this game and then whoever wins this game and the next game versus probably Kansas City. And, and honestly, what Jacksonville is for one year now starting to do is really at the ownership level build around the quarterback and so I just think when you do that, you're going to have a chance. You're going to be in every game and have a chance to make a run at the end. And to be honest, that's about as high of a goal as you can ask for year to year is to be in every game with a chance to make a run at the end. Right. Jordan, I know that Joe leads the league since 2020 with 17 touchdown passes of 40 yards or more. He seems to get more from his guys yards after catch than Josh does, who is kind of more of a put it on the receiver type thrower uh you know rather than leading a guy into space maybe as much as joe is you, you can agree or disagree with that it's just from a bird's eye view and an untrained eye view um i'm wondering though it seems like burrow has incorporated a little bit of the brady approach to his passing game it's really not all about those big plays there's a lot of short to intermediate stuff that has kind of kept Cincinnati on schedule a lot this season. I'm, I'm just wondering if, if you felt that was a major change or maybe he's all, always had that in his game. I think Joe's had that in this game. I started working with him his junior year at LSU, and, and um, you know, certainly he's elevated his game year to year. But, um, you know, part of that is the personnel. I think there's three, four, maybe five, depending on who you factor in here, people who can score from anywhere on the field, like at any point, right? There's the league's full of fast guys, but I think you're really talking, you know, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill, Lamar Jackson, if you want to put a quarterback in there, you know, there's a couple of guys who can just, they can score from anywhere. You know, they can actually break five tackles and score, right? So Jamar Chase is one of those guys. So I think you're going to get a lot of yards after catch when you have that guy on your team. Um, but what Joe does is, and, and I'll say both of them, um, you know, I work with quarterbacks of all ages. I run QB Summit. It's a tour going around the country. I see, you know, middle school and high school kids as well. I've got a couple of really high picks in my draft class right now. I just left the field going from one to another. Um, is what I see is the evolution of quarterbacks, and both these guys um, are examples of this. When you're getting elevated at the high school level, right, you go from a three star to a four star, a four star to a five star. You go from an offer from a mid major to five SEC offers or big par five offers. When you're elevating as a young quarterback, you're usually getting elevated based off of your playmaking ability. Okay. Nobody says, look at this five-star quarterback. He's the best check down shallow cross thrower I've ever seen. Doesn't really make plays, but man, <laughs> he can get rid of that ball quickly. Right. Says no one ever. So what happens is, is you're rewarded for that. Right. Then you go to seven on seven tournaments. You're rewarded for that. Okay. Then you go to college and you start to, you take your playmaking, what you got you there. And then hopefully you go to a place that starts to teach you how to be a distributor of the football. Sometimes checking it down is, is the great play, right? Sometimes throwing that ball out of bounds is the best play you can make on that play. Okay, so you learn how to become a distributor of the football. And then when you go to the NFL, the game is predominantly about distributing the football and making a play when you need to. And there's some great quarterbacks like Tom Brady 
who distribute the football and honestly don't make that many great plays. Like they tell me the time that, that you saw Tom Brady hurdle over a guy, juke another and rip 160 across his body, right? He just has. To. Well, what's happening with Josh and Joe and Patrick and these, these elite young guys in the league right now and, and Herbert, and there's, you know, I can keep going is they're really quickly becoming distributors of the football. Now, that takes buy-in, but that takes phenomenal coaching. Early on, that takes a Brian Dable and a Ken Dorsey, right, to teach you how to distribute the football. Even having Derek Anderson in the room his first year helps you learn how to distribute the football. You think Case Keenum is where he is right now because of his playmaking ability or his ability to distribute the football? Make sense? So when you start really learning how to distribute the football, and I think Steph Curry is another great example of this. He led all the college basketball in attempts. He was top four in scoring. He was top three in threes at Davidson University. But what's the evolution of Steph Curry's game? He's become an incredible passer, incredible at spacing, incredible at using defenders to get other people open. And I think that's what we're seeing out of Josh, Joe, Patrick, these guys who can make a play when they need to. But the foundation of their game is they know how to distribute the football. As we get into this game coming up on Sunday, uh, it has been said now that uh, Jonah Williams, the left tackle for the Bengals, is out. Kappa is out there, right guard. They've got, and then since uh, week 15, they also lost Lyle Collins. Three offensive linemen are going to be out of this game for the Bengals. Now, certainly they've got a whole week to, to rev up for it. But how does that change the game, particularly not just you know for one series when a guy comes in and finishes, but this is a four quarters of a football game you know, how over the course of an entire game, how does that change it for these offenses? Well, I, did, I think it does change it. Now, I think there's another stat that Joe is the least sacked quarterback over that last four game span, too. Some, I heard something like that. Don't, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not a stat guy, but um, so they've, they've, they've managed, meaning uh, they've done a good job with it. Now, this will be new, though. For, for Cincinnati, um, I, I assume that I would assume that game sold out. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm kidding. So that's going to be loud, right? And so <laughs> silent cadence is not something that's practiced with the twos in practice. You know what I mean? So um, that, that noise, that getting off the ball, that rush, you know, Ed Oliver's going to feel quick, <laughs> you know, these guys inside. Yeah. Um, so that's an element. And then also just fatigue. You know, that's a long game. Those big guys, man, they're on the move. Uh, and it's going to be a maximum effort situation for every single person, every, every position. So O-line, you know, just fatigue. Uh, play a role in that does Buffalo adjust you know heavier bull rush early those types of things um, and so I think it's going to play a role but I also think that Cincinnati is going to understand what the limitations they have better than Buffalo is right you're going to know what your own limitations are better than your opponent's going to know them uh, so I think they're going to do a great job like they have you know in a Super Bowl run last year um, where they put their their best players in the position to make plays and then they protect the ones who are potential liabilities and I think great coaches do two things, and I try and do this as a developer of quarterbacks. You want to get the best out of the best, and you want to get the most out of the least, right? So the, our best players, we need to get the best out of them. And the guys who aren't capable of helping us a whole lot, I need to get as much as I possibly can out of them. And so I think this will be one of those situations, and we're going to see Zach Taylor and company, um, I think, put together a great game plan. Now they got to go execute it. Jordan, thanks very much for the time. We know you're busy. You're literally going from one field to the other. So thanks for carving out some time for us to talk Thank a little bit you. about Joe and Josh. We know you'll be watching on Sunday. Yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting, awkward, fun one. Hey, how about this? <laughs> I coached my son's flag team, first and second grade. Yeah. And he picks. We were the Bills last year. We won the championship. Not that anybody's paying attention, but we, we did win that championship. And, uh, and he flipped just because he has a couple favorite teams. So we're the Bengals. Guess who we play tonight? I'm going to say the, play Bills. the Bengals. The Bills. Yeah. The Bills. Oh my so gosh. we got Bengals Bills matchup. So you guys follow along on my Instagram because I'm going to be on Instagram stories. This is like when you play <laughs> Madden to get somebody to see how the game's going to go. We yeah. got Bengals Bills tonight at Estancia Sports Park. Oh, that's Let's awesome. awesome. Good luck. Out. Well, good luck tonight. Good luck, man. Thanks, Thanks Jordan. Thanks. Thanks.